compound events too. Right? We've talked about compound events just a little bit before, and now we're going to look at one more type of compound event. Up until this point, we have talked about two things, something called independent and something called dependent. All right, hopefully those terms are familiar to you. And what I want to remember is that with these independent or dependent events, we're talking about events that have the word and. That's the key right there, words with and. So that's something like, what are the odds of you rolling a three and a five, right? Or what are the odds of me picking a blue one from the bag and then picking a red one on the next one, all right? So if you see that word and, you should automatically think either independent or dependent. Remember that dependent just means that they rely on each other, like picking uh, picking cards out of a deck. Once you pick a card out of the deck, it can't be picked anymore. And independent means they don't rely on each other. Now, what we're going to look at today is something that we called disjointed events. And these are kind of interesting because they will actually have an entirely new way of being referenced. If you hear of something be disjointed, what you will know to know that something is disjoint disjointed is you will see this word right here. You'll hear about the word or. All right, and I'll say something like, what, are the, what is the probability of you pulling a jack or a diamond? All right, and when you have the word or there, the word or just means that there's kind of a couple of different probabilities. All right. So here we go. This is what we're talking about when it comes to disjointed events. This is the formula that we use. We use the probability of A and, sorry, not and, because we're not talking about independent dependent. It's the probability of A or B. And when we do the probability of A or B, what we're actually going to do is we'll do the probability of A, and then we need to add it to the probability of B. All right, and if that's a little confusing, what you need to do is think about this die again over here. All right, so we have a die. It's six-sided. On this six-sided die, there are six possible options if we are going to roll it. You can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a lucky number six. Now, let's say, for example, I asked you for the, ob the probability of you rolling a even or an even or five all right you see that word or is in there now so what are the probability of you rolling an even or a five all right so what i want to look at first on this left side let's say that i just asked you for an even if i said what is the probability of rolling an even you would obviously go through here and you would say okay so you could get a two um you could get a i'm gonna do this different color you can get a two you can get a four you can get a six all the rest are odds so the odds are or the probability is going to be just three out of six possible options or 50 percent and that should make sense to you now if i asked you what the probability is of you finding an even or a five on this right side so even slash five if we go through you could still get a two that would be an even or a five a four would be an even or a five a five would be an even or a five and a six would be an even or a five and what you note is that this probability, one, two, three, four out of six, is higher than the probability of just one of the two. And that should make sense to you right over here by how we add, right? So to find the probability of A or B, we actually are going to need to add the probability of A plus the probability of B, and whatever number we are left with should be a little bit bigger than either of the two original ones, right? So let's look at this actually in terms of this problem right over here and do the math. If I asked you for the probability of rolling a even or a five, right? What you are actually going to do, this is equal to doing the probability of even on a number cube plus the probability of a five, right? All I did is I plugged in this formula P of a plus P of B and we just pulled it apart. Now, when we go through, we can actually do the math on this. The probability of rolling an even, we calculated it right over there. It's three out of six. There are six possible options. Three of them would satisfy that one. And we need to add to it the probability of there being a five. And if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, only one option, a five, satisfies the probability of five. So it would be one out of six. And then when you would actually do this math, you would do three over six plus 
1 over 6, which is going to give you a whopping 4 over 6, which is exactly what we calculated right there. Bingo, bango, bongo. All right, kind of an easy concept. You just kind of have to think a little bit as you go through. Let me undo that. And let's do a, a one more or a couple more of these to kind of get an example here. Let's say, for example, you have a lovely spinner for your favorite game. Here's your spinner. It looks just like this. Wow, that's a difficult circle to draw. All right. And it is a six-sided spinner. So you spin this, and there's six possible options. Let's pretend that Mr. Han is capable of drawing, and all those are even. This one over here is green. This one over here is green. Uh, let's go this one down here is blue. And finally, the remaining three of them are all red. So this is our spinner. Pretend that each of these has an equal area, even though they don't quite. It didn't quite work out perfectly because Mr. Hunt's not a perfect drawer. I know, I'm not perfect. Let's say we had this. If I asked you for the probability of a red or blue, I ask you for the probability of red or blue. Now, obviously, you could go through and do this, but we're actually going to use this formula here. So this is our A, this is our B. What we're going to do is we're going to use the probability of A plus the probability of B, right? Note that we have the word or there, so we're going to use this formula. The probability of A is going to be the probability of a red, so the probability of a red, plus the probability of B, which happens to be the probability of a blue. How about that? It worked out so nicely. The probability of a red. We look, there are one, two, three out of six. So the probability of red is going to be three out of six. The probability of blue, if we look over here, there is only one blue. So we're going to do one out of six. And then when we add these up, we would do three out of six plus one out of six, giving us a final total of four out of six. Or if we reduce it down, Two out of three, or a 33% or a 66% chance if you were going in terms of percentages. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, I'm going to talk about one thing that is a little more advanced here just to kind of note it in case you're watching this and you are curious about something like this. Let's talk about a deck of cards. All right, you guys know what a deck of cards means, and you've probably played with a deck of cards before when you're playing spoons or euchre or pinochle or whatever it happens to be. Let's say that this is a complete deck of cards. All right, you know that in a deck of cards, there are 52 cards in here. And you know that in those 52 cards, each of them are one through 10, and then king, or sorry, let's go jack, queen, king. Note that this one over here would be your ace. All right, and that there are four different suits. All right, so there's one, two, 1 through 10, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13 cards in each suit. So 13 in hearts, 13 in diamonds, 13 in, ooh, let's see if I can draw a spade, 13 in spade, ooh, <laughs> and 13 in, ooh, this is going to be even worse. Ready? Club. Got it. All right, so there's 13 in each of those, and those are the cards in each one. Watch what is kind of interesting about these as we do this. Let's say that you want to know the probability of picking a diamond or a number less than 2. All right. So those numbers less than two, we're going to play with it this way. That would be an ace or a two. Let's say that aces can be low. All right, those count. Now, if we're trying to do this, let's try and do the math and actually figure this out. We would do the probability of a diamond. And we're going to have to add the probability of a diamond to the probability of a number less than two. All right. The probability of a diamond, if we look through, there are four suits and 13 cards in each suit. So there are 13, let me go to a different color here, there are 13 cards that would satisfy that out of the 52. Now, we need to add to that the probability of a number less than two. So thinking about this, there's an ace and a two, I guess we go less than or equal to, so that makes more sense, equal to. 
less than or equal to. So there's less than or equal to two. There are two cards in each suit that would be less than or equal to a two, an ace or a two. The ace or the two in each suit means that there are two cards in each suit. So there'd be two hearts, there'd be two diamonds, two clubs, and two spades. And that's going to give you a total of two, four, six, eight out of 32. And when you add this up, you would get a total of, or out of 52, my, I am misspeaking today, out of 52, because that's how many cards are in the deck. When you, added the, when you would add these up, you would get a total of 21 out of 52 would satisfy this condition. Now, hopefully in your head, that at least is like, wait a second, Mr. Han, that doesn't seem quite accurate. And there is a problem with that, right? The problem is, is that these two cards right here, the Ace of Diamonds and the Two of Diamonds were included both in the Diamonds and in the less than two, right? They are both less than two and a diamond, which means that they factored into our diamonds and they factored in to our less than two. So what we would actually have to do if there's a problem like that, we also need to subtract off any of the overlap. There are two cards of overlap, two cards that are both the diamonds and less than two, and what that would finally leave us with is 19 out of 52, right? And 19 out of 52 would be the odds of you getting a number less than 2 or a diamond. And realistically, in terms of a percentage, if we plug that in, it would be about a 37% chance. There's about a 37% chance of you drawing either a diamond or a number less than 2 if you drew it completely randomly, less than or equal to 2. All right. Hopefully that helps you out. This is kind of like the more advanced thing should help you, but please remember this. Remember the essential concept is this. If you use or, if the word or is in there, you should use a plus sign for the probabilities. So the probability here plus the other probability. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a nice day.